the, the, the goal of an audition is not necessarily to get the job. The goal is to impress me in a good way so that I bring you in the next time. My name is Tom Clay, and I'm a company manager for the current Broadway show called It Should Have Been You. The casting director is hired early on uh, with the director, and they hold the auditions and decide on who they, can, who they want in the show. Then the casting director will give uh, what we call a hire sheet to the general manager or myself and say, we want to hire this person for this role. Um, and if there's any specific details, like the person has to be out of the show for a week or they need um, some excuse to go make a movie or something, that'll all be on their hire sheets. And then uh, the general manager, or usually the general manager, sometimes myself, will negotiate the salary, uh, any other things that they want, like if they have a special dressing room. Um, but yeah, we don't make the decision, but we'll you know okay. make the deal for okay. it. Okay, I'm Laura Stanzik, and I'm the casting director in New York, which I think you know. Yeah, I do. Um, and I cast primarily for theater okay. here, although I do some some film work. All right. And a little bit of television every once in a blue moon. Okay, so you're casting for. I do everything. Oh. So well. I do singers and I do dancers and I do okay. I do everything. I think it's probably because my training was in both legit theater and musical theater, so I understand it. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, you know. everybody in, in every Right. Okay. And I was never a dancer, but I know a good dancer from a bad dancer. You know, it depends on, on, on who people are in New York. You know, there is lead producers, there are groups of investors. I mean, generally my relationship is really only with the lead producer. Okay. Um, they generally don't make the choice of who the casting director is. Generally, it's the director who chooses. A a on some level, the more important thing at this point is trying to get people to commit to theater that will sell tickets. And then there's the other thing, which is just managing the overwhelming crush of actors and finding the right ones. <laughs> We go to the theater all the time. We watch people's work. We go to showcases. I mean, this is showcase season right now, and you know, and every single university, and and they're all doing their presentations. So when somebody is just out of school, that's when I first have my first real encounter with them, which is their presentation, you know, and they hopefully most of them will get representation and agents from that. From, All right. from those presentations, and then the agents will start to talk to us about the actors. I am Tatiana Mott, and I am an actor, singer, dancer, and a writer as well. The way it helps you get a job is that, you know, if I meet Joy Doing, which I, I have, I met her um, at the meetup for Audition Update, and then I went in for her. My, the agent I was freelancing with sent me in, and so I got an appointment because she remembered me. Okay. And then I wasn't right for that project, but then I got, you know, she called me in for something else because she still remembered me. Yeah. So it's all about making sure people see you. You know, and I'll bring them in. And for instance, you know, these, I was just going through a big pile of pictures of kids that I've seen at presentations recently, going, okay, this one I'm going to see for Christmas Carol, this one I'm going to see for Winter's Tale, this one I'm going to see. And I do a whole bunch of what we call pre reads, mm -hmm. uh, which is just me. Okay, so you give them No plans. director, I give them the scenes, I give <coughs> them the, the play and right. hope and pray that they're smart enough to actually read the whole play so that they're not just acting the scene out of context. Um, you know, and they work with me. And I get a sense of whether or not they're really grounded, whether they're doing the work, whether they're making the choices, and whether they're ready to be presented to a director. Okay. So that's really the route from when you're just out of school. When you've been around a bit, it's because I've seen your work. All right. Because I've seen you in other things, because I've seen you on television, I've seen you, you know, I've seen you off Broadway, I saw you down in, you know, I saw you in a play in Chicago. The agents will okay. send me stuff and the agents will talk okay. to me about things. I also get tons of unsolicited pictures and resumes. Sometimes I'll go through them, sometimes I see people in classes, I'll okay. do a seminar. All right. Sometimes, you know, they have here, uh, Actors' Equity has something called uh, Required Calls, the okay. uh, uh, Equity Principal Auditions, Required Singers' Calls, Required Dancer Calls. Um, and we actually have to see, on those days, anybody who signs up through the union and comes in. So, and I have hired, I have, there are 
careers that have started with people coming into an EPA. Okay. You know, so basically it's getting seen any way you can. The audition process, especially for theater, it's pretty easy to, to, to get to auditions without, get, without having an agent because online there are different websites that you can go to that um, tell you where the auditions are and what time. So you have equity principal auditions, which are usually from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And so if you're not equity, you have to get there as early as possible so you can get online. And so if, if it starts at 10 and you get there maybe around like 7 or 8 in the morning and you sit in line and then you wait until you can get seen. The cattle call? Yeah. It's not a myth. It happens. It, it, it depends on the project okay. and how hard it is to cast. If you're having an open call, it can sure look like that. Nobody does it on the stage of the theater because that's too expensive. Okay. It's in a room. All right. So, and if it's, you know, if it's through Actors' Equity, you sign up in advance, and so it's easier. Okay. The rules of equity state that at any equity audition, equity principal audition or equity chorus call, equity members have to be seen first. So, if it's a really busy call, <laughs> you may be there all day. You may be there from, you know, 7 in the morning until 6 p.m. and then not get seen. Um, sometimes you'll look out, you'll get seen, um, and then that's how you book equity work, or um, that's how you get your points. Okay. And then as far as preparing for auditions, uh, a lot of times it's, it's 16 bars or 32 bars of a song. This is for, for musical theater. Or for straight theater, it's just a monologue, so one to two minute monologue. Um, and you basically go in, if it's musical theater, you hand the accompanist your book, they play your bars, and then you walk back out. So okay. you, you may wait all day <laughs> and work your butt off and you're in the room for 20 seconds. It depends on, again, on what it is. Some are very, and it's the director too. Okay. Some directors don't give any adjustments. They don't ask you to change anything. You come in, you read the scene, they say thank you. That's it. And sometimes, hopefully, it does, it hopefully they say thank you. But, um, it doesn't mean it was not good. No, it doesn't. Some, some directors just don't do it. Okay. I, I have recently finished work with a director who's a terrific director in the room. He never gives adjustments, and there are very good reasons for it that I won't go into, but okay. actors will walk out of the room and say, he hated me. He didn't hate them. He didn't hate them. It's just not who he is. So sometimes what will happen, too, is at musical theater auditions, if there's a crazy amount of people, if you have maybe 600 people show up, and you know you're not going to get through that many people, what they'll do is instead of, seeing, um, instead of you singing 32 bars, they'll cut it down to like eight bars, which eight bars is literally you holding a high note at the end of a song. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Um, but they can pretty much, I mean, as soon as you walk in the room, they know whether or not you're the type they're looking for. And then as soon as you open your mouth, they know, okay, whether or not they want to call you back. So eight bars is enough. This is how it happens. You open the door, you walk in, hi, how are you? You know, you have your book already in your hand, open to the page you want. You, you know, greet the accompanist, hi, here, this is a song I'm singing, and uh, if you could start here, please, and end right here, I've cut it for you. Um, and this is the tempo, on, you know, and then you walk to the middle of the room and you start singing. And then after your 16 bars or your eight bars or whatever they're allowing you to do, you, you know, say thank you, you go grab your book from the accompanist and you walk out. Chelsea casts all the Broadway shows. Yeah, I know. So you walk in and you sing and you're out because they need to get everyone through. Okay. And then other people will want to see it one way and then see it another way or, you know, and particularly British directors love to sit and chat first and make you comfortable, which is a really lovely thing, but it's not the American school, you know. Um, and, you know, so a British director can sit and talk to you for 10 or 20 minutes before you start work on the text. Yeah, how many actors do you meet every day? If it's a full day of auditions, I don't know, probably 30. Okay. Which is a lot. Yeah. So you know, if, I mean, if, if I'm working from 10 until 6 in okay. auditions, at least that many. Okay. If it's a musical audition, maybe more. If it's a final callback situation, there are many, there are far f fewer. Yeah, of course. You know, but if it's at the beginning and it's pre-reading, we bring in as many people okay. as we can. It's a funny industry. It's not like hiring somebody for, um, to be an accountant, you know. And as long as they do the math right, they're doing the job right. It's not the same because it's about equality. It's about a way of working. It's about rapport with a director. It's about language skills and being able to do things that can be very, very specific. And 
sometimes it's just not the right mix and it doesn't mean that the actor is a bad actor or yeah. it just means that this is the wrong fit. You know, the union does not believe that tape adequately represents an audition for theater, and it doesn't. You use it as a, as a, as a benchmark, as almost a pre-read, to yeah. say, okay, is it worth going further with this? Is there something yeah, 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 yeah. interesting in this? You know, I just cast a wonderful production, really brilliant production, of a play by Tom Stoppard called Travesties. And the actor who's playing the lead, uh, Henry Carr, which is uh, like one of these tour de force roles. I mean, you, the, the opening monologue is six pages long. And the actor that, you know, I really wanted to do it was in Los Angeles. And he put himself on tape, and you could tell from the tape that he would be brilliant. You could absolutely see it. They weren't going to cast from the tape because it's a huge role. So we flew him in from Los Angeles, and he came in and he read in person, which I was deeply pleased about because he was really, really brilliant. The trick with that is he put himself on tape. Okay, so you didn't ask for I it. I didn't put him on okay. tape. He put himself on tape. It's his choice and he can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. We have had open calls. It has to be something specific and difficult to find. For a show like Dirty Dancing, for instance, we had tons of open calls. Of course. Because, it's what, because what we were looking for was so specific. You know, either from the dancers, because, you know, like the ballroom dancers, it's not something that, you know, the agencies don't go, oh yeah, I've got this great ballroom couple for you. It doesn't generally happen that way. One good thing about being an African-American woman is that for a lot of African-American shows, the auditions are usually pretty empty because <laughs> there's not as many of us. Um, but if it's like Legally Blonde, where they just need a bunch of blonde haired women, that's a lot. It's, yeah, you're going to usually have a couple hundred. But you know you don't have to get there, so that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a role in it for me. Yeah. <laughs> so sometimes what they'll do is they'll type. Um, so they'll, they'll take all the headshots in groups. And then, you know, so, so say they know, okay, we're going to have 500 blonde-haired girls, but we do have this one role for the African-American girl that we need to fill. Let's, you know, make sure they get seen. So they might type out a lot of people that they're not looking for and make sure that, okay, well, let's bring her in because we want to see her. Generally, stars are, they've gotten to where they are because they are comfortable, because they have this kind of ease and they put other people at ease. Mm -hmm. As well. Uh-huh. Uh, to a young actor, I would say, you know, understand what it is you want to do in that audition. You know, make your choices. Know what it is you want to do. You know, I've done the work. Prepare yourself. Think about, you know, and just go at it creatively. The fact of the matter is, you know, the, the, the goal of an audition is not necessarily to get the job. The goal is to impress me in a good way so that I bring you in the next time. Okay. And the more often you do good work, the more I'm going to bring you in and the more I'm going to be able to say to a producer when it comes time to hire you, I've hired this person three times and we've never had a problem with them, you know? Everything you do yeah. follows you.